All right, instead of some final thoughts, we are actually talking about the entity component system right here. A couple of people have pointed out, listen, Hytale is going to use an entity component system. So, Kalpen Joel, why don't you explain that as well? And I'm not going to necessarily explain it, but I'm going to try my best. First, with this particular theory lecture, and then in the next video, we will also have a, a semi-practical example. It's going to be convoluted, it's going to be quite crazy, but hopefully it's going to teach you at least the thought process that you need to have in order to understand an entity component system. Likely, I will say, Anything that Hytale uses is likely even more complicated than this, though. We're going to contrast the Entity Component System with OOP. We remember this is the Object-Oriented Programming, and basically, this is where everything was an object. So, for example, in Object-Oriented Programming, the relationship between an object that it is something. For example, a dog is an animal. Or we could say in a, a Minecraft example, a creeper is an entity, right? Things like that. So it is always a is a relationship, right? You always extend certain classes and you implement certain interfaces. Whereas when we're talking about an entity component system, this is just a way to organize your classes. What we have here is that we have a has a relationship with things. So high level overview, you have a world which contains systems and entities. So these are the two sort of main things that are contained within a world. And these entities, those can have different components. And depending on what components they have, different things might happen. So an example might be that an entity has a noise component over here. And any component basically is just data. That means integers, even complex data like custom classes, all of that still applies, like all of that still works. You know, you can think of components as fields. This is a highly simplified view of this, obviously. But basically, I want you to try to map the OOP thought to the entity component system thought. And that's sort of one of the things. So components are basically data that you add to an entity. And then there are systems. In this case, for example, we have the sound system. And that is the logic. Here, think methods. So in this case, components never contain any methods. They only contain fields. That would mean, you know, integers, uh, you know, any type of thing. They can even have lists of things, all sorts of things. That is all fine, but they are just comprised of data. And the real benefit to this will be shown in just a second. So we remember once again in object-oriented programming, right, we would have a hierarchy, right? So we have an animal and then we have a bipedal animal and then we have a human and then here we have a kangaroo and a dog and a cat. And this is fine and it works for many different applications. The object-oriented programming sort of design paradigm absolutely works for some of them. But you run into a lot of issues if you want to mix and match certain things. So if I now wanted to have a dog, which theoretically would meow instead of bark, what I would have to do is I would have to make a new dog class that extends from the cat, or I guess a cat class that extends from the dog. So you'd have a dog cat. You can't really combine them because remember in object oriented programming or just in Java in general, you can only ever extend from one class at a time. Meaning you would have to either make one of them an interface, right? Which but doesn't make any sense. Or I don't even know. You need to make like another class in between that's like a dog cat. It just gets very convoluted. The positive here is that with ECS over here, what you have is different entities. You can just add different components to them, right? So for example, over here, we have an entity one and that is the two legged component. And then it has the human speech component. Ah, this is probably a human being in this case, but we can also add, in theory, we could add a pettable component to this entity too. And all of a sudden it would also be pettable, right? So the cool thing about this is that we basically are creating new quote unquote, uh, this is a big quote, classes, right? This is not correct, exactly the right idea, but basically we're creating new forms of beings just by adding different components to it. We can think of this as an example with like different types of enemies, right? If you had to make a new subclass each time you make a new enemy, well, if you have two enemy types or five enemy types, all right. But if you wanna have 100 enemy types, 150 enemy types, it starts getting quite complicated. But with ECS, you can just attach different components and all of a sudden you have a, you know, completely unique and new entity type. For another example, I have this by Curious1313 from Twitter. They basically made a rough sort of estimation on how certain things work. This is not 100% accurate, but it sort of shows the idea between object-oriented programming in Minecraft and how Hytale could feasibly do it. So here, as you can see, you know, the creeper class inherits from different classes and has an entity class and the pig over here and it copies something. So if we wanted to make a exploding pig, 
it, you basically have to combine and tweak certain things and it gets quite messy. Whereas in an ECS system, you simply take the model, you add it to the entity, you take the behavior, explode and approach, you add it to the entity and that's it. Now, while this is really cool, right? You have like reusable components. This is really awesome. In theory, in practice, you will see there's a lot of boilerplate code to write, which you may find not quite appealing. Like I said, we will see this in the next lecture. I'm telling you, definitely go through that if you're interested in a Hightail modding. I think that it will be definitely be useful. However, it is completely different than what we're used to in, in object-oriented programming or in Minecraft modding. To hammer this home one more time, let's say we have a noise component right here. Then what we would have is we would, for example, have a string name that is attached to this noise component that is data only. And then the sound system has a process method, which, for example, would actually also have the world that is given inside of it. And that is the logic. So everything that it has to do with the sound system happens within the process method in this case. And what happens here is that we go through every entity which exists, right? And then for the example, the sound system only uses the ones that have noise components. And we can then use that data on the noise component, for example, to change the world, the entity, data on the entity, add new components, remove components, all of that's craziness. We also have to think about the world. So what the frick is the world? Basically, in an entity component system, we have entities contained somewhere, and that in this case is the world. It could also be the registry, but you know, for usually for game development, we would call it the world. And this world basically gets has a list of all the systems that it uses, and then uses a tick method or an update method or a process method, and then calls those on each of its systems. So you can see, for example, right here, we have a world, and then we add different types of systems. This is also already code that we're going to use in the next lecture. So we can see that we have a padding zoo right here, and that's exactly what we're also going to basically have. Now, one immediate thing you might think of is, well, isn't that really cool? Because you can add or remove systems quite easily. So that's like a plug and play sort of thing. Yes, this sort of miniature view of a sort of plugin system. It's not 100% like a plugin system. It's very much a scaled down version of it. And then when we have a world, we also have systems, right? So once again, systems, they usually have a single public method. They can also have obviously private methods and things like that. But one of the most important things here is the process method, in this case, where we get the world. This could also be called take, update, you know, anything similar like that. In our example, we're going to call this process. And here they basically filter or query the world, right? So they ask the world for entities with specific components and then act upon them. We can maybe think about a health system, which asks for every entity which has a health component associated with it. And then also has a damage request associated with it. So only if there is a damage request and a health component on that entity, then it's going to do something. For example, change data. We can attach new components. We can remove them, etc., etc. Finally, some vocabulary that we want to think about for next lecture. The first one is the world. Like I said, this is the highest level sort of thing that exists within your entity component system. It contains all the entities, it contains all the systems, and it processes the logic of each system. This also usually contains the main tick method. So this is basically going to be where any sort of ticking logic, processing logic is going to happen. So you might have, you know, for example, a while loop, and then you have some sort of time management system that then calls the process method every X, you know, times a second or something like that. And then every time that process goes on, then things happen. In our example, we're going to call the process method just twice, just on our own, but that's going to be totally fine if just to see sort of the example. Next up, we have entities. Entities are data containers for components. So these are similar to classes in OOP. We will actually also make an entity class. Usually you can have a pure ECS system without even an entity class, but I think it's going to make this a little bit more clear in this case. And to be fair, I just want you to sort of have, have understood the, the rough sort of shapes around an entity component system instead of being like, okay, I'm going to go full force in. This is going to be highly optimized. No, no, no. I just want you to basically have a paradigm shift from OOP to the ECS just so that you know how it works. Next up, we have components. Those are pure data. They come in a couple of different flavors. This is not a universal way to organize them, but generally speaking, we can have normal components, which often include additional fields, right? So this could be a health component, which includes an integer health, right? That that should be fairly self-explanatory. We then have a request component. These could be components which are added once and then removed to an entity on a state change. So here we can have a damage request with a one right here. And then this would be what we do, right? We make a new damage request. 
we attach that component to an entity and that would be the thing that we do instead of calling the take damage method. There's also tags. Those are usually empty components which just describe the identity more or less of, a, of an entity. That's roughly speaking how we could sort of organize components and think about them. Finally, we have the system over here, which is the logic processing of entities with different components. So once again, for example, we have a combat system over here, which processes the damage for all entities with health components. If none of this made sense to you, that is totally fine. I'm telling you, the next lecture will illuminate this. It's likely going to be quite long because there is a lot of boilerplate code to write. Hopefully, I will be able to explain it well enough so that you at least understand the sort of, like I said, the paradigm shift from OOP to ECS. Personally, for me, I found it quite interesting. I do think that you have to think in a different way, just because I never really thought about sort of entity component system in the way that I sort of that I sort of put it together for this and the coming lecture. But yeah, that's an introduction to entity component systems. Like I said, very loose introduction just to get you up to speed on some of the vocabulary. And then next lecture, oh, that's what we're going to jump in and we're going to go crazy with actually implementing a semi-simple entity component system. Until then. So, yeah.